Hello family, welcome to Geekademy channel, my name is Igor and we are continuing to analyze season 2, today episode 3. Not that many details, but as usual I found something very interesting for you, you know, after two first episodes with a lot of drama and monsters, you know, people are escaping, Martin, Worms and so on and so on, this episode is more talking to each other, conversation, starting to understand what's going on with the city right now after the bus arrived, people are finding their own place and there is some clues that I want to share with you. But before we begin, as usual, I want to thank everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. Your monthly donations is what gives me a lot of motivation. It's not the only thing, obviously. I want everyone to enjoy my videos. It doesn't matter if you support me on Patreon or on YouTube, financially or whatever. I want everyone who watches this video to enjoy them. But when there are people that want to support this channel with their own money, if it's like two, five, ten dollars, even twenty, there's one Patreon who supports me for twenty dollars a month this is absolutely insane for me and i don't want to be you know like presumptuous and i want to be cautious i don't want to get ahead of myself but probably every youtuber who starts doing something and gets a little bit of recognition starts to think about maybe that one day one day in a couple of years i don't know when but maybe this is something i will be able to do every day waking up watching this episode analyzing it reading about it finding new information spending most of my day for just analyzing amazing stuff that makes us feel like geeks because being geek is amazing when you obsess about something there's worth living you should obsess about something whether it's a book movie tv show a person anything otherwise you're just gonna live all of your life and you'll always be cool you know but you know what is the point you should obsess about something and we are today gonna obsess about from so let's dive in and as usual before we start with the scenes from the episode i told you many times i don't want this channel to be about me this is about us this is about this community of amazing people who want to share their ideas theories and of course i'm not gonna make all of the video about it but every now and then i want to share your comments your donations whatever it is just to let you voice your ideas so everybody else can hear them too so first of all i want to thank um, mercy eskins for donating two dollars from texas which is amazing never been to united states but definitely gonna visit texas one day i think it's an amazing state and not just because you donated i watched many videos movies and tv shows and i always wanted to visit texas but let's dive into comments the high numbers are probably step that's how he measures if the trees move i think the trees movers are like gears in a broken watch when they move time moves forward towards some events maybe the end of the cycle okay interesting theory you were not the only one who wrote about it so yes steps kind of seems interesting and maybe even logical even though it's kind of hard to count more than 2000 steps even if you know exactly that from point a to point b there are like 2500 steps there's still a good chance you're gonna make a mistake because you, you're gonna have to count 2500 steps that's a lot so i'm not exactly sure that that's it but i love the theory and another one is basically if you remember we watched it on the previous episode we have seen some kind of camera when christy and mariel were talking i was not sure that it's camera even though it looked like one so now i have a confirmation uh, from edward gonzalez and from many others who wrote it in comments that this is kodak brownie hockey flash camera roll field contact uh, compact camera sorry so yeah this is a camera and people in fromville should start checking you know those uh, high school yearbooks those cameras those uh, tape recorders there and try to understand what happened to people here before so yeah let's move into the episode and the first scene as usual we're gonna put some v next to the time differences we have the clock here in boyd's office it's showing us from one side it's 726 the second hand not moving as usual it will never move and i will never stop mentioning that because from the other side we can already see that the time is different it's it's about eight o'clock there so the clocks are not showing correct times even when they are next to each other and i will never stop mentioning that because we have seen many times that time is moving this is not just an unfunctioning clock they are moving so it has to be deliberate it has to be something that the production wanted to happen in this show they put some effort for it to happen because if you don't put effort, either the clock is not working at all, or they are working everywhere. This is the simplest thing to do. 
and it's not the case so yeah i will keep talking about the clocks and we have a new board obviously it's an old board but it is different because we have some new information here not exactly but some things moved who moved them i have no clue but you know the creators of the show already know who are they are dealing with they know us and they know we're gonna notice everything so last time we checked the story was pretty much uncovered and we could we couldn't obviously because of the you know like uh, blurriness of this image but we could check this story this letter now it has this envelope that usually is down there usually it's below the story somebody moved it up who moved it kenny i have no idea but if yes what was the point what was the point even changing it you know like they were preparing for season two obviously they were remaking those things i think so this is the production this is how they work and they could have replicated exactly as we have seen them in the end of season one but they chose to do it differently once again something to think about i don't think this is like some kind of interesting amazing clue about what happens in fromville but i notice everything and everything that i notice i share with you so another thing that i noticed a couple times first of all there's this grandpa that we've seen his images already in uh, victor's trailer in previous episode but there's another thing that i'm noticing here is the children's chair this is a chair for a kid like a, an infant or a little bit older than that like two three years old and it's pretty old, the chair looked like it's from the 60s, 70s once again, not something modern. And we still don't have any children here, like the youngest kid here is Ethan, before him it was Megan, and we have never seen any more children, and especially not with monsters. And with monsters we also have seen the bike, you know, the bicycle, sorry, not obviously the bike, you know, like motorbike, the bicycle there, which was obviously a children's bicycle, still. No children, but uncouid children. So are they spirits that came from whatever place or they were actually children in this place and every grown up became a monster and they became, you know, the uncouid, uncouid children or whatever. So yeah, Ethan here is worried about Norman. Once again, the creators are peddling this information to us. We need to understand and we need to remember. Norman has to be important. I don't know if Norman is a chrominocle or it's just a toy, whatever it is. Maybe it's also a character, a person that we're eventually gonna see or a presentation of one of our characters. But he obviously has a lot of screen time, which means he has to be important. This is not a show that basically just tries to fill every episode. So we're gonna get past 10, you know, like, so yeah, we're gonna have to show them something, just anything. There are shows like this. I can confidently say this is not from. So when we move forward, we understand that there were 25 people abroad on the uh, bus. After this night, Donna and the others were able to find 22, which means three are left. So we're gonna find a little bit later Kelly, you know, the girl that's gonna be killed with the road, her fiance, her boyfriend, whatever it is, maybe he is somewhere, also don't know. Still, it leaves us one person. Okay, once again, either the creators don't know how to count, which is doubtful, or there is someone who is yet to be found. And since we finished the whole second season without finding this mysterious 25th person, I don't know if, if we're gonna see him or her anytime soon, which once again raises some questions that need to be answered, but maybe there is a good chance never gonna be answered at all. So we move forward, we just nice touch this is something that we're gonna see in the hospital this is just a small note that reminds everyone who lives there you know like to check the locks again close all the blinds check the talisman so i kind of like it once again i told you already it a couple of times i love the small details that only us will notice okay 99% of the viewers will probably never notice those tiny details, but it helps the actors, it helps also, you know, the crazies like us to actually feel the reality of this place, to feel it as real as possible. So I always enjoy those small nice touches from the uh, production team. So yeah, we have those roads, not like my microphone roads, you know, those small metal sticks that are basically used for the animal traps and Kenny can find one and we unfortunately know exactly where it is. So once again, it shows a lot of creativity from monsters. I hate using this word because it's usually it's a positive word that you use, 
but you know like monsters were basically knocking on door and killing people and here they are using objects okay this is a very smart ai very smart npcs in this video game they are using objects that laying out there in order to play and torture their victims so they are getting either smarter or they are switching some kind of phase. I don't know exactly what's happening, but we can confidently say that the monster we've seen in episode 1, season 1, and the monster we are seeing right now, pretty much different. Those monsters are way more evolved. So, Victor's come back to his room, and come on, Jade, don't be a douche, okay? Even if you, like, went through somebody else's apartment and you tried to find some clues, at least leave something, like, I don't know, like, clean after yourself. Even if you thought that Victor probably dead, if he isn't, clean after yourself. It looks like you deliberately made a lot of mess, like you didn't have to do it. This is not even something like you have to do and after that you need to clean, like eating a burger or something like this. But here you just basically went ape shit on his room and obviously Victor's gonna be upset. But the most interesting thing in this room is obviously this semi-trailer, this house on wheels that looks very similar to Matthew Strack. I don't think I noticed this before. I'm not even sure it was before in this room or it just appeared here for second season have no clue but okay it's not exactly like it okay we can see here there are two windows there are two small windows on the side here it's like one big one but you have to admit it's pretty similar and we can start noticing that there are some things that are similar to reality from victor's toys another thing is on this spot like here there used to be a drawing of a blue car and a tree blocking its road now the drawing is gone and there's a new one once again, what is it? Is it a production failure? They didn't replicate the room, the Victor's room, exactly like it used to be? Or there is something more here? I honestly here already starting to think that I need a tinfoil hat because it does look like maybe the production was not exactly sure that somebody will notice even though they kind of need to understand already who they are dealing with and we're gonna notice everything including the color of the socks of every character there so you have to put more effort in details and this is not the same image that was here when jade and ethan went through the room now it's different so what happened here jade removed one and put another image after that you see there's another interesting thing here once again you need to put your uh, tinfoil head for this maybe you know like after victor and ethan left because we never heard jade actually admitting for making this mess yeah he took the violin he looked for it but you know like leaving this kind of a mess sounds weird i know that jade can be a douche sometimes but not like that anyway there's another image we can see some kind of like an arm or whatever it is there are big huge nails just like martin had but mostly like monsters have so maybe probably it's them nine inch nails and we have something here it looks like maybe somebody wearing a hat and behind him like there's a backpack that monster coming out from it kind of difficult to understand but this looks like legs or once again i'm just seeing something that it's completely not there here i also see some kind of figure this looks like eyes legs an arm maybe it's a monster and he ate somebody so there's like a blood on his shirt i don't know exactly what it is we're moving forward there is the ideal ship models are and we have a ship here once again some small detail that can be just an easter egg just some tiny piece of information but we have seen already ships in the caves we have seen already the image of a ship you know coming with the sunset or with the sunrise and people are happy or angry about it so the theme of ship kind of starts repeating itself so I notice and there's the big happy family I don't know who that is logically you start to think about Victor which family he would draw but you know like there's father mother and there's four children one of them is a grown-up or maybe it's like a family and a couple of kids maybe it's some sort of like a Matthews family you know with Ethan here and uh, uh, Julie here and those are the Ankui children I don't know once again some crazy theory but look at this one here it's very golden even though this one looks like more like a girl probably because of a pink shirt sorry for being you know like too stereotypical but once again it's an old image and this one looks like a guy this like 
the pose here kind of makes you think about a, a kid, you know, like a boy. But once again, when we look at the Ankuyu children, one of them has this really yellowish, you know, like uh, golden hair. Sorry, I jumped uh, the image. Maybe it's somehow related to them. I don't know how, but here we have the golden hair, probably a girl, and the black hair, probably a guy, and here it's the opposite. So I don't know, once again, just pitballing here. Anyway, we move forward. We can see the forest here that Victor is picking up. We can zoom in and we can see that in the middle of the trees, there are some kind of like black fins or something. Are those the spirits? Are those the evil that Martin was talking about when he said that the monsters are just the tip of the spear and there's a lot of evil in the forest? And this looks a lot like those demons or whatever monsters are that are coming from under the ground on some of Victor's drawing. So maybe there's something we haven't seen yet. Or maybe this is what basically infected Boyd and then became the cicadas with the visions and so on and so on and so on. Anyway, there is an anchor. I don't know what it is. It's probably just a stone between Mariel and uh, Christy, something that connects them. But once again, it's an artifact. It has something identifiable. So I'm just gonna remember it for a reason, maybe we're gonna see it uh, somewhere later. And we have another clock that is not moving, and once again I'm gonna put for you the video and you're gonna see that the second hand is not moving, but the clock is gonna move. So once again, there is just the same problem with all the clocks, so please, somebody tell me if I'm not crazy. There is probably some explanation for that. What can you think about? Why all of the clocks are moving, but every clock has a broken second hand? What is the point of that? So when Kelly remembers what happened to her, we see again this guy that we have seen once in season 1. He was talking to Julian, he said, don't you remember me? And there were a lot of people that basically saying that this is probably Thomas, he's grown up. Somehow, even though he has to be younger than Ethan, so kinda weird that he's grown up already. But I'm pretty sure this is not Thomas, 99% sure, because this is still from, so everything can happen. Uh, but yeah, he first of all, he's wearing this jacket with the same symbol as the cheerleaders. So they're probably from the same school, you know, this place. We're probably living and kicking a couple of decades ago and people were normal here before they became monsters. I don't know exactly how it happened. Hopefully we will see it. And also one of the arguments was that because we have seen him only once in the whole season one and two, this is probably why he's Thomas. So here you go, he's not only seen once, he's also the one who's killing uh, Kelly and Brian. So we move forward and once again we discover more about monsters, they wanted to play with me, we usually see them going completely insane, striking, attacking people and ripping them apart. Here they wanted to like torture, not just kill, not the quick kill as a hunter, more of a torture kind of way and they even made it somehow for her to be alive. Now the whole point of her being alive like is kind of miraculous. Even though she's gonna die in about five minutes, but once again we have seen this place doing miraculous things with Ethan's leg, we have seen Alice here recovering like it's nothing completely like that, so maybe this place also helped Kelly to stay alive while there is a road in her head. Yeah, there are situations like that, it happened in real life sometimes, people were even able to survive sometimes without half of their brain. It happens. But maybe there is some magical, you know, like mystical explanation here for that too. So we see here another butterfly. Once again, there's a lot of butterflies, some uh, birds, some, I don't know, sheep, whatever it is, fishes all the time. There are some kind of living creature here. I don't know once again if it's connected somehow or it's just What's with the butterfly here, Lebowski? Anyway, we're moving once again to electricity. This is one of those times when there was no extra strong light after we have seen, you know, the flickering lights here on the exit sign. But as soon as Jim tries to do something, the suspect numero uno, Tilly here, arrives to ask some questions. And she's like, I was going to a racetrack. I want to bet on ponies. I've been visiting racetrack all across the country. So I think she's lying here. And there can be two reasons for her lying. Why do I think she's lying? Because, you know, I don't know, like I cannot judge anyone, but it sounds a little bit far-fetched for me. Somebody who discovers they're terminally ill and their reaction is, yeah, I'm gonna go and put some money on the ponies. Maybe travel the country, maybe, you know, like live every day like it's your last, because it could be. But betting money on race trucks? 
Sounds weird to me. I don't know. What do you think about it? I would love to read your comments. But she can be lying for two reasons. Maybe it's basically Jim. It's not your fucking business why, what I was doing. So she didn't want to answer directly that she's basically maybe driving to some place where she's gonna get a treatment for her disease, some kind of treatment. This sounds way more logical to me, but once again, I don't judge. Everything can happen. Second reason is Tilly is some kind of a mole and she is here for some specific reason. And the point is that you want to bet on are basically our heroes. You know, like there are a lot of times, like all of those Hunger Games, uh, Squid Games scenarios, there is somebody who is inside with everyone else, but they are part of the management of the team that created the game or the experiment. So maybe this is the case here too. So. This dude is also important, he's having visions, he's remembering things, he knows there is a water nearby and it's called Brundles and obviously Fatima, who is really broken after a couple of episodes, showing him the Brundles and we still don't know why do they call it Brundles and she is telling him that this place is like calling to us but only some of us were listening closely enough to actually hear it. So this is basically different words, same meaning, something I said to you in my previous analysis. So there are people that can hear this place, that can connect to this place. Sarah, Ethan, Elgin, maybe somebody else who we're gonna see in season three. And some of them, not so much. But obviously since Elgin a character, he gonna play some role. They didn't bring him just for the sake of him being there. As awesome as this guy is, he is actually pretty awesome, I'm gonna enjoy him a lot in episode 6. But once again, if you put a character there, it's gonna have to play some role. And Elgin having those visions probably gonna give us some interesting answers. Now, how does it work? How does he know what's happening? My theory is he has been here. He has been in this place when he was a small child, but once again, we're gonna have to live and see. So when uh, Tabitha and Julie are leaving Mrs. Liu warehouse, with new clothes, they're seeing once again Dan Kui children. So here the main question is, what was the trigger for her starting to see the kids? It can be her adventure in the caves when they went like, Hi, you know, in the caves for her and they were like, yeah, we're gonna come for you now. We saw you and now you're gonna save us. Or her taking some clothes, maybe there were some Victor's mother's clothes, maybe there was somebody else, somebody who was somehow connected to Ankui children and they're like, you have this shirt, we are pretty much uh, possessing this shirt, we are like spirits and we're gonna follow you now wherever you go. So once again, what was the trigger? I think this is the most interesting question in this situation. So this moment is definitely not new for you, but I need to blow off some steam. Like every other day, there's somebody on Facebook who is like, why they're not using phones? There are no phones in this place. The creators haven't noticed that you can just call somebody. Why nobody tries to call anyone? And this is kind of pisses me off, even though I'm usually a very calm person. Because once again, the phones are not working here. It's been said a couple of times. In the first episode of season one, Tabitha, when she's talking to Jim, they're saying there is no connection, there is no reception there. So stop with the phones already. The phones are not working in this place. Obviously, this place is out of this world. It's not connected to our real world. You need to fall from a freaking lighthouse and almost die to, you know, to escape. So calling somebody is not an option. So sorry you had to put through this, but I needed to say this. Anyway, hallucinations or magical hallucinations, because at some point she, Kelly here, she's starting to say, do you hear that? It's... and then she starts screaming. So once again, there is a logical explanation here. You have a freaking road in your brain. You can see something that it's not there. You can experience some hallucinations. You probably will, if God forbid this is, happens to you. But once again, this is from Will. So maybe she is seeing something. Some Ankui children, some Ankui grandchildren, or whatever it is. Something that makes her scream in agony when Boyd needs to, you know, like finish this and relieve her from her misery. Once again, just something for you to think about. And we're moving forward and. The Ankui game, okay? Ethan here found something and we've seen already this in the caves, but we've seen this in stone structure and we actually talked about, you know, like being the Inuit culture and Inuksuk structure that they used to build. So this one looks even less like the Inuksuk. 
I don't know once again if it's related or no, if it's connected somehow. But this is once again just tells me that we need to follow Ethan. This kid has some sense for this place. He know exactly what to take, what kind of game to take. This is an important game, obviously, for understanding this place. And he chose this one from probably a lot of games that they have in this place because they don't have anything else to entertain themselves. And he chose this one and obviously his mother is freaking out because once again she's seen those two kids that are pretty much creepy. Now if you remember in the first scene when Tabitha was looking at them, the girl was having her evil smile moment. She was like, huh. once again kids are not improvising in those moments. And even if there are, usually the director will tell them, you need to make your evil smile and you need to look sad and you need to look angry. And the boy here, he's just basically not really emotional he's just looking very very sad i don't know but the girl the first time she was smiling evilly this is definitely not a word but i like it and here she's looking at uh tabitha more of like what you're gonna do about it also have you noticed that both of them has a very similar scar on their forehead is this some kind of leftover after they were killed for you know the ritual for the sacrifice for something that we're gonna see in the end of the season yeah once again probably not a coincidence it's not just something that the makeup department were doing there and we're like yeah let's put almost the same cut on their foreheads because this is logical no if it happens usually it's connected some how? So when we move forward once again, another coincidence or this is somehow related to the mystery of this place. When Boyd is talking here about Kelly and her boyfriend Brian, he remembers that he had a soldier and his name was Corporal Brian Kelly and this was the first man who have seen die and he died in his arms when he was on his tour on Iraq or Afghanistan. I don't remember exactly, the detail here is not very important. Because this coincidence can actually be just a coincidence because Boyd is right now experiencing some Thing, he starts to think that maybe it's all just a dream and you know when you're in some place and there are like two characters and one of them is Brian and Kelly and you know that you had some important Brian Kelly in your life you start to think maybe this is my brain using information that's already inside of it and imagines all of it I highly doubt it because there will be riots on streets okay there will be horrible horrible repercussions from fans from all over the world will go out to streets to protest this kind of ending if this show is gonna end with boy just waking up and you know like, oh my god that was a bad dream it's gonna be bad and i have a lot of trust in the creators and the writers that they are not taking us in this direction but this is just something to understand more, uh, you know, Boyd's character and what he's going through right now. So yeah, this is episode 3 for you. I already went through episode 4. Yes, I'm trying to pick up my pace and I really want to be the man of my word. I promised you that all of the episodes will be released until September 22nd. And I'm doing my best with the job, with my family, with everything. I try every time I have like a minute of free time, I'm spending it on from and I'm confident I'm gonna I'm gonna deliver. So thank you so much for watching until the end. Feel free to support this video any way you want, just by viewing it, seeing it until the end. This is already a great compliment for me. And I see you in the next one. Bye.